Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Xan Talk Show. Today is 2019, January 7th, Tuesday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, San Francisco time. Welcome, welcome everyone.、Uh, so, today we have tons of things to talk about, and I'm going to show you my breakfast. And、uh, this is my breakfast. This is nuts bread, whole wheat bread. And、uh, leftover from my roommate's cooking. They cook, I eat. And、uh, then this is photo taken in front of my door, my apartment door. You know, when, we, when I show this picture to other people, they say, oh my god, this is beautiful. Well, this is Silicon Valley, and、uh, I'm, I live in this poorest neighborhood. but I guess it looks good. It's envy from most other places in the world. So, this is California. This is Silicon Valley. You got lots of trees.、Uh, if you go to Google Maps and you look around, you know, you go to Street View, you'll see a whole lot of trees in Silicon, Silicon Valley than other places in the world. So, I have quite a few topics to talk about, and、uh, I'm gonna. So, let's. Begin one by one. And mostly today I'm going to talk about JavaScript. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Justin. And good morning, Dan. And I want to show you, and Freddy. Freddy is going to sleep. Good night, Freddy. Freddy is in Germany. Germany and United Kingdom, and Dan Morris is from Brazil. Am I incorrect? I'm sorry if I mixed up. Brazil, right? Brazil. MSRI. Justin has been to MSRI. Me too. <laughs> Justin. Justin is the greatest, well, is a great math, mathematician. Okay. And、uh, I happen to show you guys Justin's curriculum vitae. This is Justin's curriculum vitae. Now let's have a look. Now, of, of you programmers ignorant in mathematics, have a look at a real mathematician's resume. Okay? So, Justin, curriculum vitae, Pu Justin Scarfai Young. Okay? PhD of Math, De- De- Department of Math, University of British Columbia. Okay? And、uh, you can see、um, education, we don't care about education. Okay?、Uh, but. See, mathematical research interests. My main research interest lies in number theory, in particular in the following three different areas. Okay, let's,、uh, we need to magnify this. Okay, so、uh, number theory in these areas, analytic number theory. Now, that's kind of a branch of number theory using analytic methods, meaning calculus. Uh, so basically, in layman's terms, that means you study number theory using the techniques of calculus. So, analytic number theory and harmonic analysis.、Um, I don't know exactly what's harmonic analysis. We can look up. So, so, and it says bounded gaps between primes. Okay, that's a big problem. Sieve methods. Okay, zeros of L functions. Hardy Littlewood Circles method, okay? And、uh, then, Iwasawa theory and Galois representations, Taylor Weil method and beyond, Block Kato Tamagawa number conjecture, Birch and Swinston Dyer conjecture, okay? These are、uh, kind of advanced number theory stuff. You don't know what they are unless you have a Graduate degree, you know, post you have a yeah, graduate degree in number theory, then you know what they are about. Then, arithmetic geometry and uh, uh, automorphic forms, okay, very advanced topics. Arithmetic, arithmetic geometry, which is basically using geometry to study number theory, like、um, uh, cubic curves, something like that. You know, th- there's a name. I don't, I, I don't know these things. 
so, so that's uh, Justin Scarfi, our friend, our friend Justin Scarfi here. <laughs> Justin, good morning, Justin Jones. Uh, Brazil, yes, Dan is from Brazil. Brazil. Okay, so that's Justin's resume and and seminar talks and so on. So, you know, you can you can go to Justin's homepage. You or ask Justin. Okay, Justin is right here. <laughs> Justin, good morning, Justin. And someone sent me these uh, Xafly keys cheat sheet for Ergodox keyboard using Core Mac. So as you can see here, so this is Ergodox keyboard. Now you don't you don't know. You, do you know what is Ergodox? Most of you know. Half of you know. Half of you don't know. So you see because we have lots of topics lots of different people some people are, don't know about keyboards but let me show you okay so ergodox is this very popular uh, keyboard that that is originally a do-it-yourself keyboard it is this one but however you can also buy it it comes in two form forms one is this with the wrist pad together as one unit and the other form is without wrist pad so you can see this is so this is without wrist pad this is ergodox okay ergodox keyboard and actually let me post the link so you can go and buy it uh okay so close this close and go back to talk show and let's start to post we, we're gonna talk about javascript today actually <laughs> but we're gonna get into that so and for those of you Emacs users, as usual, look at my key commands on the left window. You can see all my Emacs command and you can search on the web and you'll find the code. Okay, so so here is the Ergodox keyboard uh, link. You guys go there and buy it. Enrich yourself. Increase your productivity. <laughs> Okay, so let's pop this out and let's move this window to the right and stop this and uh, let's close down a bunch of... Okay, so anyway, so Ergodocs, let, let's go, get back to Ergodocs. So showing browsers, today's topics, Ergodocs, where is it? Uh, Ergodocs keyboard. So you can, you know, this is do it yourself you can buy the kit and build it yourself or you can buy pre-built they it costs about three hundred dollars fairly expensive if you want it pre-built I mean even if you just buy the kit it's like 250 270 dollars so you know uh, it's good but they are better ones okay so these are you know so they have one two companies that sells them one is called Ergodox EZ, which is this one. And the other company that makes it is Ergodox Infinity, which is this one. The Ergodox Infinity has the LED, you know, kind of a, a little display on each side. And, uh, you know, you can you can buy them pre-built. So that's Ergodox. And, uh, you know, you can read my reviews and so on. So, so... Hold on a second. <laughs> I started to play that video by mistake because I have auto click on. Then I hear something is going on. I didn't know what's going on. So someone who is using Ergodocs and who is using Xaflight keys. Now, if you don't know what Xaflight key is, let me show you. Uh, fly keys. Okay, so actually. So that's for Emacs of you Emacs users. Xaflai Keys is a efficient key binding system, more efficient than Vim. Okay, and uh, it's one of my most popular package Xaflai Keys. And uh, okay, so let's copy it. 
uh, Dan says, show us your resume. Okay, I'm gonna show you my resume. My resume, my resume is just my website. Okay, I don't have much. Um, okay, I can. Let's maybe we talk about it later. Uh, I need to go fast because we have. I have a lot, tons of things to talk about today. Mainly, I want to talk about JavaScript. So remind me later. Okay, if you still want to check out my resume then we talk about that let me tell you about stuff like keys first so stuff like keys you know uh, it's one of my most popular package efficient key binding system for Emacs so as you can see all my you see this pink window Emily's favorite color this uh, purple you see you see all the keys on the left side those are the keys I type you will not see a control something or meta something I don't press those keys so this is sapphire keys the most efficient you can you can edit paste cut undo copy the current line paste the current line add um, add return magnify lowercase you see all single key press there's no code however sometimes you you, you might see a code here that's because I'm using macros but actually I'm just pressing single keys so I talked about this many times so stuff like keys so someone he's using uh, Ergodox and using stuff like keys he created this uh, layout uh, picture which is so let us I need to perhaps I need to add this somewhere so let's do it okay let me show you some Emacs workflow demo so where is this picture at? Uh, wait, I want to find the location of this picture. Oh, downloads. Okay, so downloads. So I'm going to rename this file. I I'm gonna add x. I'm gonna add e e in front of it. Okay, so it's renamed. Now I go to my Emacs. I go to my Emacs block. Let me show you the keys. So I call my bookmark command. Bookmark command EB for Emacs block. Enter. That's my Emacs block. Show in browser. Okay. Now I want to add that picture here. So I go. I go to here, press three keys, then I get a section. Then press two keys, type a directory, and uh, there it is, Ergodox Cormac. Okay, so let me change the name. Ergodox Cormac, Cormac layout. So XAR fly keys. Okay, you see, there it is it adds this block block of code show in browser there we have it so now this this is in my Emacs blog uh, I need to add this I need to move this image somewhere to my you know to to the soft like keys section somewhere but I'll worry about that later uh, but who who sent me this? I forgot the name. I need to check my email, but I don't want to check it right here. So I need to add the name. You know, that's the workflow. I need to say, oh, so, someone, you know, the name who sent me this cheat sheet. Uh, you know, but for now, I'll, I'll do that later, okay? And for now, let's go to the, go to eShell. Okay, let's call XAR Interactive a brief. So we got R sync, magnify, enter, and do a password. And uh, now it's updated to my Emacs blog. Any questions? So you can see this is the things I updated on several pages and different websites. 
So let's go to, for example, now we go to um, Xa Li Emacs blog. Okay, let's go to blog. You can see the picture there. Now, let me also mention, so I just created a new uh, version of my Emacs tutorial. So you guys buy it. Okay, it's a, according to me, it's the best Emacs and Emacs Lisp tutorial. You will not find the quantity or quality elsewhere, including printed, published books in the history of humanity. <laughs> you will not find a better one. I, in fact, I would say mine is far, like, far better by a gap. Because Emacs, it's not necessarily because I wrote the, I write the best tutorial, but actually because Emacs is a very niche topic. There are not many people, you know, book publishers, they will not publish Emacs book because there's no sale. So you don't get much Emacs books, unlike, for example, JavaScript, JavaScript, C, C++, there's, there's 1000 books. But Emacs, Emacs Lisp, in particular Emacs Lisp, my Emacs Lisp tutorial is basically the only one, uh, uh, basically the only one in, in existence in the world, okay? Not counting the Emacs Lisp manual. There is one introductory to Emacs Lisp, but that's like, that one is for uh, people who have never programmed before. So that doesn't really count. I mean, that's like, like that book, uh, let me show you, okay, so anyway, you go, you go by my Emacs tutorial, okay, go by it, and uh, let me just type the things in my talk show, so get the link and stuff. So here is it, here is it, um, okay, so there is a link. So let me tell you about the Emacs, uh, the Emacs thing, Emacs uh, let's talk about Emacs a little bit. So, yeah, there's a few things. Um, yeah, so we were talking about Emacs Lisp books. There are no, basically, there is no Emacs Lisp book that exists. There are, there are a few, like published more than 10 years ago by O'Reilly. There's one, like one. And they doesn't, it doesn't even begin to cover Emacs Lisp. It's just some kind of very short intro. So anyway, and the other, so what I'm saying is that my e Emacs Lisp tutorial is almost basically the only one. So you go buy it. And now let me talk about this book. This book is somewhat popular because it's people cite it all the time on Reddit, you know, on Emacs places. So this book is by Robert J. Chassel. He died about, uh, he died three years ago. And he wrote a book called Introduction to Programming in Emacs Lisp. This is the guy, it, he looks like that. He died three years ago at age 70 and uh, his book you can you can find it it's bundled in Emacs so you go to you control H I you see this is a command control H I goes gets you to, to info okay then you 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 tap to the um, there this one Emacs this intro a simple introduction to Emacs Lisp programming. Okay, so you open it. Okay, this, so there is a book. You can actually, it's bundled with Emacs. You can actually start to read it. Now, this book is designed for people who have never programmed before. That is, it will spend pages and pages to explain what is a variable, what is a function. So for those of you who already programmed, you know, this, this is a very extremely tedious book because when I was reading it like 15 years ago, you know, I was thinking, oh, I'll just skip the parts I know. You know, I know what's a variable. I know what's a function. I know what's a subroutine. I know what's a loop, you know, 
<laughs> I, know, I know those things. So I think, okay, I'll just skip it quick, quickly and just get to the, you know, the the parts about Emac Lisp, the language that, so I can learn something. But it didn't work out because it's so annoying. So you have to turn 10 pages, you have to scan 10 pages to learn one sentence about Emac Lisp. You know, then and you don't know where because you have to actually scan each page. You scan, scan, scan. You spend five minutes, <laughs> then you find you find one sentence. Then you have to. I mean, because it's interwoven, so you cannot simply just read that sentence and get it. You have to read what's. You have to know a bit what's before, what's after. So this book is not good. If you have any programming experience already. This book is worthless. Okay, it's worthless. In the end, so I read a few chapters. In the end, I just uh, there is a one function. Okay, let me show you. So I'm going to actually. So this is about a review of this book. So hold on a second. Let me let me show you something about Emacs. Okay, so review of this book. So let's go to my Emacs blog and. Uh, Let's copy this line. Robert Chassel died. Okay, and let's paste it here so we have a topic. And also back to the blog. Are you guys still here? Talk, talk. So, any questions, comments, post it. Post it okay. And uh, so this article is about, is my review of that book. And also about should a beginner programmer learn Emacs Lisp? So you can read about that. Okay, so let me copy it, paste it here. So that's kind of today's topic we talked about. So, so about that book, uh, you know, if you never programmed before, it's good. But if you have some experience it then it's really no good so that is about that book okay am I still alive 12 people okay I'm still alive good uh, Justin Scarfy okay so what's the next topic so let me show you the next topic so you go by my Emacs tu tutorial and what what else? Let's see. Um, okay, so let's sh let's clean up this page and uh, let's upload it. Okay, so replace, find replace, do that. Show in browser. Now that's better. And now let's sync again. So now it's synced to my website. And now this is the today's talk show link. So Justin says, what's the link to his resume? I don't have the link handy, but it's on Discord. So you guys, if you haven't already joined Discord, let me show you the Discord link, okay? Um, go to the talk, go to the top, search for Discord, and here's the link. So you go there, There's a link. So you go there and you go to um, you go to the general section and you scroll up, scroll up like 10 days, then you'll find Justin Scarfi or type the search, okay? JSC there, Justin Scarfi. So, so here is Justin's posts, so you can find uh, you'll find his resume somewhere there. The link. 
Next topic, show us how to program Uber. I, I don't know how to program Uber or SpaceX. Uh, how, to, how do I know? I, <laughs> how to program Uber and how to program SpaceX. <laughs> you show us. You, you know, you are a mathematician. You show us. So uh, next topic. So let's go to next topic. So who are here? This uh, Kathy. Kathy, say something, Kathy. So next topic, I think I'm going to go into JavaScript. Let me show you JavaScript then. I want to do this today. And, uh, you know, I know my resume is more dramatic topic. People like to know, but... Uh, but let's let's do maybe uh, let's do JavaScript first. Okay, let me show you about my JavaScript thing. Close that. Uh, soft light keys. Close it. Ergodox keyboard. Did I put the link here yet? Yes. Close it. Programming blog. Okay, lots of things. Um, close it. Okay, now let me do, let's do JavaScript. Let me show you what's going on, what, what I want to do, okay. Uh, bookmark JS, copy the file path, close it, and post it here. Okay, this is my JavaScript in depth. So Kathy says, Yep, here I'm reading the season schema while listening to your stream because I know nothing about JavaScript. Okay, seasoned schema. Are you getting into scheme? <laughs> not recommended. And uh, the seasoned schema, I do not recommend that book neither. Although the author of that book is one of the most prominent computer scientists. In fact, he. His specialty is programming language design that books author. So let me show you guys okay, in case you don't know. I mean, many other do not know. Because Xa Li, let's see if I have the book somewhere. Maybe I have a link to it. So did you read, Kathy, did you read the SICK book? SICP, Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs. Did you read that book? You know, that's one of the most famous uh, book among Lispers, among hacker types. So, I, I, I don't have an article on the season schema, but, um, but I've talked about the author in my blog. But let's show you SICP Wizard book. This is the most famous wizard book. So you have read it. Okay, Kathy has, has read this. I, I read this book in 1998. This book has four chapters and I read three of them. Uh, you know, so this is uh, very, this, this is a book that's kind of become has become a meme so you see all the people making meme of it <laughs> the structure and interpretation of computer programs and uh, there is a sequel a sort of sequel called how to P design programming languages i you know that came out around 2004 and i have not read that one but, you know, as you get old, these books come and go, you know, there's always new books, <laughs> you cannot read them. And also, when you are young, you read them. But when you, you know, after 30 years, if you are still, still like reading these books, you know, after 30 years, you should be have written a book, you know, instead of talking about, oh, which one is the best book, you know, that's silly. After 30 years, you should say, okay, here's my book. I recommend this book, my book. You know, so I'm too old to tell you like, oh, this is a, this, this is a great book or that is 
uh, not a, a great book, things like that. Uh, but anyway, so I read this book like um, 22 years ago, and uh, I think it's a great book. Um, and so what what am I going to say? Good morning, Thomas Wall. So I'm going to ju do JavaScript. Actually, the JavaScript I'm going to do is not about um, uh, season schema. Okay, wait, hold on a second. I I want to I want to tell you about something about season schema, the book. Okay, because that guy Matthias Matthias something you know is is one of the great. Um, computer science scientists on programming language design so let's go to golan wait not golan let's go to find golan script so this is my golan script um, and I want to copy the file path here and uh, put the file path here so I'm going to search all files in Li info directory. You have thousands of files, 10,000, 20,000. Um, and I want to search for season schema. S-E-A-S-O-N-E-D. Let's just search for season. Okay, so actually search it. It'll come back in a few seconds. There it is. we have several results there it is so saw find output mod so now we can see seasoned schema by daniel p friedman okay that's not a guy I, I, you know they are part of the rice university um, team. So in this article I'm talking about this infix syntax survey. This okay this this is actually a good article uh, and very dramatic too. You know I've been talking about these things for 20 years so I kind of get tired of it you know <laughs> it doesn't excite me anymore but this this article is one of the most dramatic thing among Lisp this language and these programmers because it comes up it comes up every year about whether Lisp should have a infix syntax and it, in fact it is a pain in Lisp because you don't have an infix syntax now like I said before this is a very dramatic uh, topic I can go on about this this thing for hours and uh, you'll get a bunch of people say, "Oh, I don't agree." Oh, I, you know, they have strong opinions, which, but usually they they know nothing. Uh, okay, so what am I going to say? So there it is. So I mentioned this book. So Racket Lisp. Okay, Racket Lisp. Uh, so they have this guy. Okay, so the guy I'm talking about is Matthias Felicen. Fel This guy. He's very old now. He's like 70 or 80. So he is, uh, I, you know, I always get confused of him and the Daniel guy, Daniel P. Friedman. Okay, okay, wait. Daniel P. Friedman is the, is even older. Daniel P. Friedman, yeah, is even older. So the Matthias Felensen is, is a student of Daniel P. P. Friedman. Let's see. I mean, they collaborated often. Yeah, so Daniel P. Friedman is born in 1944. So now he is 76 years old. Okay. And uh, he and uh, Daniel P. Friedman and uh, Matthias Felensen. I, I always got confused of these two people. <laughs> I, I got confused who is who, who did what. 
but they they often collaborate you know they are in the PLT scheme team PLT is you know the group for uh, racket you know now it's named racket Dan Friedman is older okay right so La Casa La Casa where are you from I forgot uh, uh, let's see let's let me read the comments okay so yeah so my comment about that book you know they they wrote a bunch of books and uh, it turns out I didn't like none of it although I respect their work however they they created a bunch of books you know they how to design programs very popular that's that's by them this this book how to design programs is supposed to be a sequel the sequel for the for the computer interpretation you know for the sick for this book structure and interpretation of computer programs is supposed to be a sequel this one the sick book is written in 1980 1980 um, 1990 or 1980 I think it's 1980 something so it's pretty old so they have this how to design programs which is a sequel okay then they have a bunch of sequ they have a sequence of books like little Java a few patterns I read that book it's incomprehensible I don't like their style I don't like the way they talk you know they this books this okay let me let me read the names the lit a little Java a few patterns okay 1998 then the little ML 1998 ML means meta language which we, which we, which you have or camel you have camel you have standard camel you have uh, F sharp for Microsoft those are all ML meta language you know fam dialect and Haskell is kind of similar Haskell bar borrowed a lot from ML meta language so he wrote also a little ML and they also wrote a little schema then they also wrote the seasoned schema so I read I read you know one chapter scanned them I don't like them uh, I don't like those I don't like their books they they write in a style such that they try to tell a story in a um, you know they they are not in a typical programming tutorial style where they say okay to do this you need to do this or they explain data types of a language then explain you know loops control structure then they explain they have examples you know things like that those are typical programming language tutorial style of books but their their books the little something little something is is unusual they don't follow that they they try to kind of their goal I mean their intention is that they try to tell you some kind of story such that such that you just read and read them and you gratuitously gratuitous, uh, gratuitously understand the important concepts okay that's what they are trying to tell you that's what they are trying to do am I correct Kathy so so I, I so so that's what I'm saying I don't like that they are books okay I even though I respect you know they these two people I rather prefer their you know I prefer you know pure raw logic you know like mathematical logic <laughs> you read you write a book like a mathematical logic extremely cold and austere no joke whatsoever every line is symbolic logic that 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 style I actually um, prefer Oh, so they call it the so Socratic way, like a conversation, right? Yeah, I remember. Like two two people can't converse. <laughs> so let me check the comments. Um, the sick takes a lot of time to do the questions. Very painful yet enjoyable to read. 
uh, so Justin says I enjoyed sick a lot of numeric problems but I think that's okay for prospective programmer okay yeah it didn't help a lot in read uh, real world work so Kathy says even doing machine learning there is almost nobody writing numerical approximation or matrix multiplication by themselves uh, what do you mean you mean you mean they those code already exist in libraries right nobody there is almost nobody writing writing numerical approximation or matrix multiplication by themselves yeah they already exist in libraries you know the numerical approximation and matrix they, they you know actually if you dive into them in detail there's a lot of issues I mean it's not trivial I mean it's trivial to create such a program but it's completely non-trivial to create a very efficient and accurate program for doing numerical uh, computation because you know you, you, you in fact you have an entire subfield numerical analysis <laughs> you study four years numerical analysis to learn how to write efficient algorithms on numerical com computation so Justin says I guess because it was from MIT they can be very numeric focused can we change cock to automatic uh, so Justin Scafi always have the idea he told me that he want cock to be automated theory improver but I, I, you know Justin is very uh, is a mathematician I'm not you know I, I, I don't know you know I'm not qualified I'm, I'm just an under, undergraduate degree equivalent but Justin always have very weird ideas it seems to me what do you mean what do you mean making cock to be automatic because as far as I know automated theory improving that is the goal of humanity humanity since 1960 okay since seven since since 60 years ago automated theory improving so we want you know we want to create a system a computer program such that just let it run and it, it will create all theorems like relativity or whatever or the fundamental theorem of the universe you know it, the computer will just run because after all it's all just logic if it's just logic why not just let the computer run you know you just create the system and let it run you just create all the theorems you possibly will ever know in the future you know you don't need human mathematicians anymore so that's the goal that that is you know that is of course the ultimate goal but we tried and tried and tried we can't do it it, it, it there's tons of problems because when you dive deep into logic <laughs> you find that your systems doesn't work you you run into lots of problems so you know incompleteness problem where if you have a system you cannot prove certain things you can prove that you cannot prove certain things so you run into a dead end then you try to modify that then you have different logic then you have type theory oh that doesn't work so we need types you know because if you have this system you run into Russell's paradox <laughs> because this sentence is true if it is not true you run into a Russell's Russell par paradox so you try to fix that then you create type system type theory you have hierarchy of types then you <laughs> then you have infinity problem so you know so all the logicians and mathematicians the ultimate goal is to create the automated theory improvers but when you dive into the, all these details you find problems problems you know you fix them and to this day we don't have you know it doesn't work okay well we have a lot of progress but as far as a automated theory improved system that's still a dream that's uh, far down the road a dream we have no way of tackling that problem uh, for example another you know I, I'm not really qualified to talk about this but I know a little bit about it so so you have so many systems and so right now the current the hot shot system is the univalent math foundation or 
homotopy type theory. You know, m many of you has especially ask our people, Justin Jones. You must have no. You know, homotopy type theory, and and then there's also category theory. Okay, so you try to so you have the, all these systems, and you know, first order logic, symbol, you know, second order symbolic logic, and you know, there's so many. And so far, we don't know. We don't. We, you know, we we are far from far from a automated theory proof system. So since you know, twenty years ago, mathematicians and logicians they stopped. They abandoned abandoned the goal. <laughs> they, they understand that that's a pipe dream. We are not going to do that anymore. So they abandoned it. Instead, they have a what's called a theory improving pro, pro, theory improving assistant programs you know theory improving assistant system assistant system that means a computer program that helps you prove systems pr prove theorems help mathematicians help logicians prove theorems it means you know you, 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 it's a program you don't you know it's not just that it runs by itself. You have to actually, it just helps you, you know, it helps mathematicians to create theorems. And Koch is one of them, C O Q. Okay, I, I, let me show you an article, okay. Study theorem pro provers. I wrote this article 10 years ago because I was trying to understand the thing. Okay, state of theory improving systems, two thousand eight. Uh, Koch is one of them, and uh, you have several others. You have uh, many of them are written in OCaml. You know the meta language, the meta language. You know, we talked about in this book. So let me copy the link. Okay, so let me show it. Uh, Okay, so you know they are trying to write, you know, so the, you have these proof systems. Uh, whole light, this one is written in OCaml. Miser is written in Pascal, I think. And Cock is written in OCaml. Isabel, Isabel is written in Pascal. Uh, Miser is written in I forgot what. And uh, you know, so you have these systems, and by the way, there's also one uh, written in Common Lisp, not popular. Uh, so you know, you can actually each one of them has a Wikipedia article. Uh, you can you know read. Let me just put. Let me post my um, link then. So that 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 is what I know. I I think so. I don't know, Justin Scarfi. What are you saying about automated system? Because <laughs> mathematician has stopped doing that. They instead they have uh, proof assistants. They 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 renamed their system to be called proof assistant systems. But I you know I I'm, I don't know I don't know the thing. But Justin Scarfi knows. So I. So you have to teach us, you know. Justin Scarfa is saying, "Okay, Justin Scarfa says, miser is first order logic." Okay, miser is first order logic. Okay. So, so I don't understand. What do you mean by automated theory? You know, I think Justin told me he wants to. He has idea of creating a system that's. Automated, automated definition creation system. That means you just let the program run, and we will create all definitions automatically. But that that's kind of beyond me. So I I don't know I I don't know what's your question, but yeah I I mean I I yeah so. So actually, I talked about uh, ten hours. How long have I been talking? Thirteen people watching. 
we have 10 more minutes. Let me do 10 more minutes. Guatemala, okay, La Casa is from Guatemala, right? Great. La Casa. I have to remember La Casa. It's a Spanish name, so Guatemala. So yeah, Justin Scarfire says there are people working on automated, automates mathematical definitions. Um, I don't know what's the context, so I don't, yeah, uh, you have to tell us. Okay, so let's next thing. Let's talk about ten more minutes, and we shut down. I'm, I want to do this JavaScript thing. Uh, essentially, it's a that's a book. Those are the people. Let's close it, refresh. Uh, so I want to yeah. So this syntax survey, close it. Okay, so let me show you JavaScript. Okay, so you go to my JavaScript in depth, and you can see. So I have you know JavaScript in depth. I spent two years. So buy buy my book. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. Just go there and buy it. You go to PayPal and buy it. It's a uh, in depth JavaScript, in my style. Okay, I, I teach JavaScript in depth. So we're gonna do ten more minutes, and that'll be it. Any final questions or comments? Say it now, okay? Let's get a drink, rock star, energy drink, sugar free. And one mega ton of apple juice. Golden apple juice. My key. This is bicycle lock. Justin says some of my messages don't get through here. That's correct. Because Google is doing censorship and stuff. If you do not, if you do not a, um, um, let, me, let me do this, okay. I want to paste, okay. Let me explain what's going on. So I create, so let me, let me show you Emacs workflow. Okay, so actually the season schema. Uh, this is the go script. Close it. Actually, uh, close it. Close the window. So let me show you what I'm doing. I'm going to copy the file path of this buffer. Now it's copied. And uh, the you see you can see always remember to check the left window. It shows all my commands. So copy the file path, paste it here, edit it so that the HTML become text, txt, okay? Now I'm going to open the link and it says the file does not exist. Do I want to create it? Space for yes, okay? Now I go to here, select or copy, go back to Emacs, paste. So this is today's chat. Now, why do I want to paste? Well, I want to save it, you know, so we can have a record, okay? <laughs> you know, this is no secret information. This is public. So so copy the file path. So now I want to linkify. 
So I just press a key, it becomes a link. And uh, press a key, it becomes a paragraph. And show in browser. And uh, scroll down. So we have a link of today's chat. Now, I want to do it there because, uh, you know, so Justin Scarfi says, tell us why Google censors. You know, Justin is a very, you know, it's a mathematician. And so <laughs> his view is very focused on math. He studied math like 20 hours a day. So he doesn't, doesn't really see things, what's going on. You know, why Google censor? That's a big topic because Google has become very evil. Because look, look at what you just posted. That line is censored. You see? Can you see that? You know, you, you typed, tell us why Google censors. And Google censored that one. Because Google don't want you to know they are doing censorship. Uh, and this is going on right now in society. And, uh, you know, we call it, well, it's it's just going on, <laughs> OK? <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't, you know, <laughs> you know, once you know, the more you know it, the the worse it get. You know, it's not good. So let me show that. So let me try to switch to live chat. So let's see if I see any post that's not here. Anyway, so let me show you JavaScript. So go to JavaScript. So this is my JavaScript in depth. And you can see these are the topics. So first of all, on the left, you have JavaScript in depth. You have HTML tutorial. You have cascading style sheet tutorial. Then you have JavaScript in depth. Then you have JavaScript object references. You know, this is this is references for JavaScript object. Then you have DOM. Now DOM is is what you need to do when you when you want to use JavaScript to uh, program websites. They are separate from JavaScript, so you need to study DOM. Then you have SVG tutorial. SVG is a graphic system that allows you to create dynamic animations such as clocks, pie charts, statistical charts, stock stock charts, business charts, things like that. Uh, so this is my tutorial. And then you have my blog about this related web programming stuff. So you buy it, you buy my JavaScript tutorial, you get all of them. OK, now what I want to do is, you see, you go to my JavaScript in depth, and you scroll down, there's a video, OK? This video is my live stream uh, teaching you how to write a interactive rotating polyhedron. So anyway, you look at the index, OK? So this is my table of contents page. So you can see JavaScript basics. So you, you have basics here. All these are basics. And JavaScript variables. Then JavaScript string topics, then JavaScript functions, all about JavaScript script functions, then all about JavaScript object properties, then about object and inheritance, then about array, then about lots of other things. So if you go to each one of them, let's say, let's go to um, JavaScript function. Let's click on it. So you, you, you see, I tell you all the possible ways to define a function in JavaScript. That's this page. Now you scroll down at the bottom, you will see this navigation box again. Now, again, this box is all about related to JavaScript function. So you can move on to the next topic, arrow function. So this page discuss in detail everything you need to know about arrow function, which in this community is just called lambda, anonymous functions. 
Okay, so good morning, Matt. And, and okay, so arrow functions. So again, you go to the bottom, then you see the same navigation box again about JavaScript function arrow of uh, everything about JavaScript function. Now, I like to make a change. I like to make a change so that all these little different navigation boxes become one big navigation box. So in other words, what I like to do is you see, let's go back to the index page. You see all these navigation boxes, I want to make them so that there is one, one big like coherent uh, navigation box. So that's what I'm, I like to do uh, in the next five minutes. Let's do five minutes. Okay, let's try it. Then we shut down. Good morning, George. We are about to close down. You so late. Well, you. It's good morning to Australia. It's very early there. So what time is in Australia? And thank you for coming by. So Australia is s s seven o'clock. 8 o'clock in the morning, is that right? Australia. Perth, you know, on the west side of Australia. Seven, uh, 8, 8 o'clock in the morning, right? So any, anyway, let me go, let me start to work on the JavaScript. Let's just do it. Okay, so before we do anything, let's go to the directory, xrd info. Then, git status you know I'm using git if you don't know git just search for xali git you will find my git tutorial for version control so this is the so it tells me all this file has been changed and all these these are the new files so let's just do it okay let me do this quickly so git add do it then git commit Commit it. Okay, then let's call XA interactive a brief. Okay, and let's type back. And what you get is the delete backup command command line here. Okay, I say enter. So that will delete all Emacs created backup files. Okay, it's done. So now I want to make a backup. I want to do a git commit. So in, because right now I'm going to do a systematic find and replace on hundreds of pages. So if I make a mistake, I can revert because I have I just have a git commit. I can revert to uh, the version before. So now we have that. OK, so now we are going to make a change. Let me do this quickly. OK. So first of all, go back to Emacs. Yeah, Google. Google censored my very important message. What, what's your message? I'll post in quarantine song. Oh, George, don't post anything sensitive. <laughs> I'm not sure what is that. Don't post anything sensitive. So let me make a copy, okay? Make a backup of this directory, done. And the command is that. Then I want to copy this, okay? Copy this, okay? I want to create a new file, paste it here, save it, xx, today's date, okay? And uh, so this is the what we're gonna do okay so actually open a new buffer so so I'm going to <laughs> I'm just gonna work on it okay so let's just watch me work find and replace replace by nothing that 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 that, that, that. okay show in browser so now you can see we have one huge navigation box. Okay. And uh, the miscellaneous, uh, actually I want to include the miscellaneous. So let's go to the miscellaneous. 
Um, show in browser. Scroll down. There it is. Miscellaneous part of the huge navigation box. Now, what you want to do, what I want to do is let's move this here, okay. Set background color seashell, okay. And I want to copy this line, copy, copy this block of text, go here. I'm gonna hold on a second let me show you this okay for you Emacs users I want to copy this entire uh, navigation box text and I'm going to press a key so now it's copied to my register you can see the command saw copy to register so now so I have this text block av available to me anytime now I want to copy this, copy it. So call Xa find replace, paste that. This is the text I want to replace. Then I want to replace by that whole navigation box. So I paste it, you see, and I say OK. And in this directory, yes. And in all HTML files, suffix, yes. Extension name, yes. Write changes to file, yes. Fixed case in search, yes. Fixed case in replacement, yes. Make a backup, yes. Okay, now it's done. It's done to uh, tens of files. Several, okay. So now close it. Now let's do this again. So now JavaScript variables, okay. Done. Now JavaScript stream. Okay, done. Now JavaScript function. Okay. Now object property. Okay, done. Now what is this? Object and inheritance. Done. Now JavaScript array, find it, replace by the full nav box. Done. Now JavaScript constructor and classes, find it, replace by the full, na full navigation box. Now JavaScript iterable, which is a new thing in JavaScript. Find it, replace by the full navigation box. Okay, let me try it again. Done. Now JavaScript regular expression. Now JavaScript number, now JavaScript miscellaneous, 
actually miscellaneous is the, there is no navigation box so we don't need to do that so actually this is all done so now let's view in browser you see beautiful full navigation box let's see if we uh, magnify let's magnify okay so we have JavaScript let's click on one of them let's go to JavaScript function define function now scroll down you see now we have the entire full JavaScript box here you see you see the green shows the current page now let's jump to JavaScript object property property overview now scroll down now you have the entire navigation table of contents again so you see so this is fantastic actually it's done now what I'm going to do is just to sync to my web server so I go to I go to the shell again eShell and XA interactive abrev or sync enter upload to my web server so now if you you see all these files has been updated about 200 300 files 250 files so now you go to Xali JavaScript and we are done today okay thank you guys for coming so let's see Xali JavaScript or search for JavaScript in depth. You can see the fruit of today's work. You see the the index becomes one. The table of contents contents. Let's see JavaScript constructor class. Let's click on that. This binding very complex thing in JavaScript so that's it for today okay so Google better make your video safe for work Matt what is quarantine song tell me on discord okay Justin Scarfi the quarantine song is my is on my Xali discord it's a channel it's a room for discussing sensitive topics basically uh, yeah so Kathy says it's originally set to discussing controversial topics with heads up warning so that they can focus on the discussion without falling in Bitcoin and <laughs> offensive argument that's true <laughs> that's true okay thank you guys for coming thank you for watching that is it for today's talk, talk show and hope to see you tomorrow and hope to see you on Discord. Buy my tutorials, okay? Emac list in depth and JavaScript in depth. Bye guys. And thank you guys for Kathy and many of you who has already donated.